Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Eustace Farmer, and welcome to Cattle and Crops, the pre-release early access Steam edition, kind of, (laughs) sort of. What happened was yesterday I was setting up the game again for the first time since the Steam release. They sent me my Steam key, and um, I found that my Logitech G27 uh, wheel and pedals were not cooperating with this game. There is some little tricks that you have to play on this to get it to work right. Now, my core starting foundation for doing this was I watched a tutorial from my good friend Grizzly Bear Sims. He did this a while back, and some of those rules still apply. But I found that I had to do a couple of additional tweaks to really get it to function pretty much the way that it should. I thought it was worth making a video about it, so that's why I'm here. So for all you cattle and croppers out there, if you've got a Logitech G27 wheel pedals and shifter, this video is going to interest you. So stay tuned and we're going to get to it right after this. Alright, so before we get into the game settings in particular, there's a few steps that you need to know here with your G27 profiler. Now, as a side note, I'm going to leave a link in my description to my Google Drive. I'm going to put two programs in there for you. One is the original G27 profile software, because what happens is sometimes when the computer updates or sometimes if I unplug my G27 and plug it back in, it will update this software to the newest version. And then if I try to reinstall the old version over it, it doesn't seem to take. So I have to uninstall the updated version. And then I use uh, CC Cleaner to clear out um, the residual registry files that were left behind. And then I install the original and it works fine. I'm going to leave a link in the description for that. I'm also going to throw in there a very old program called DX Tweak. What this does is, as long as your wheel is functioning properly, like your optical sensor is not broken or cracked or anything like that, and everything inside is nice and tight, but your wheel just seems to still be a bit off-center. This will fix it. My wheel was annoyingly off-center by several degrees for the longest time. I just happened upon a very old forum post back from 2010, and somebody had put a link in there for it, and um, I grabbed it. So I'm going to hand it to you guys. Okay, now on to this. So yesterday I created a cattle and uh, crops yeah, Klops. <laughs> Cattle and Crops profile. And I, I just I just couldn't get the software to match up to what I needed in the game. So this morning, I decided to load my Farming Simulator profile here. So that's what I did. And as you see, it's right here. I'm not going to click on it because it'll start the game. But let's have a look at specific game settings and then the global settings. So in here, use the special... Um, force feedback device settings. I just leave that the way it is. There is no force feedback in cattle and crops, but uh, it seems to take these settings and, you know, it doesn't do anything with them, but it doesn't seem to cause a problem. So here's the listing for those and the damper effect strength. Um, Enable center spring force. This seems to work. I don't know why, but it does. (laughs) Um, Use special steering wheel settings. I did not check report combined pedals. Um, I tried it with that and it gave me one heck of a time. Degrees of rotation is 900. Use special game settings. I have allow game to adjust settings unticked. So that's in the special game settings. Okay, now let's just go into global device settings. So as you see here, it's pretty much all the same, except this is allow game to adjust settings. It's not going to follow this because I have it unchecked in specifics. So that's why you have to have a very particular profile set up for each individual game. So you can have those little nuances that you've programmed in working every time you open the game. You can open the game via the profiler or you can just do it through Steam regularly. As long as this is open and running with the, with the whatever profile you want to use selected, it'll work just fine. All right, so time to get into the game settings. So I am not going to alter what I have done, but I will talk about what I have done (laughs) because I don't even want to breathe on it now (laughs) because it works great. Okay, so in the settings here, in gameplay, 
Um, I put gear must be changed for reversing and I have automatic handbrake ticked. And that's important because we're going to use our brake pedal as our handbrake. It's programmed right now on the spacebar, so that will toggle on and off the handbrake. So you hit the spacebar once, the parking brake will stay on. It won't come off until you hit it again. But when you apply it to the brake pedal, every time you push that brake pedal, it quickly toggles on and off automatically, so it doesn't stay on. That's the trick here. Um, another couple of things I did was I just like manual transmission, so I tick that off. And automatic engine start, of course, I tick that off. It's up to you. Okay, so this is where we're getting into the good stuff here. Controller non-linearity. The more you raise this, um, the more turns it will take to perform a, a specific maneuver with your wheel. So if I ramp this all the way up, I may have to spin the wheel almost like three times before the vehicle reacts. So you'll have to adjust this to your liking. I ramped it all the way down. It works great for me. I have 900 degrees of rotation and it works great. Controller sensitivity, I have all the way up. So in here, the before you even begin to configure any of this stuff, and this is very confusing because for the wheel and pedals to work in the vehicle, you actually have to program things in movement. And movement is for the walking and control of your character. They need to be more clear about this, make a separate thing because down here they do have it for vehicle but there's nothing in here to help you in vehicle <laughs> so that needs to be changed all right so configure axis so these are some things um, that I got uh, from my friend Jerry that worked out great the calibration is very easy I ramp the dead zones all the way back to nothing for each one of these now if you find that it's a little too abrupt for you you can go ahead and tweak your dead zones and make it a bit more gentle. That might work very nicely with the brake, as a matter of fact, but I'm not going to mess with it right now. So, wheel axis. It's on steering wheel. There's a drop-down menu. Normal, throttle slider, and steering wheel. You want it on steering. Everything else I have on throttle slash slider, because that's kind of what a brake and a gas pedal is. It's a slider. It works on a slide scale. So calibrate each one of these. It's just going to ask you a simple question. Move the wheel all the way to the minimum and the maximum and hit done. Brake pedal, accelerator clutch works the same way. Press it all the way in, let it go, click done, and you're set. Very easy to do. Then you're going to come down here. So in the movement, in the second column or the third, whatever, um, you're going to want to have your accelerator programmed to forward movement. Backwards, I have it set to brake, but I also have it set to, uh, as you saw, you must change gears to get the reverse. So um, I have my shifter programmed to go from forward, neutral, and reverse. Now, as far as wheel axis goes, all you have to do is program one of these, the left or the right. And this is um, here what my friend Jerry had said in his video so very helpful with that because not very intuitive <laughs> now as you see here run full throttle it's set for the shift button this is just for walking and running um, it don't even bother with it but these are the three important things right here so I programmed the handbrake to the clutch it didn't seem to take I think it's because it's a slide scale it needs a toggle so let's do this let me put it on one of my wheel buttons, button 21. We know that'll work. So that's if you're going to get out of the vehicle, you want to apply your handbrake before you get out or it's going to roll away. And it will. <laughs> it's actually a cool feature. Okay, so toggling gears, I have them set up to my shifter. You can put them in whatever slots you want if you have an H shifter. Shifter, not sifter. <laughs> Toggle forward and backwards on button um, eight and nine. So it's all the way to the left and up is to go up in the gears and then all the way to the left and down to go uh, uh, backwards. And then here's to shift the gears. Button 10 is, uh, is a slot in my H shifter. So to shift up, I use um, go forward in 10. And then to shift down, I pull the stick back in slot 11 to go down. And then of course, indicator left and right on my paddle shifters on my wheel. I just uh, programmed them for that. And that's pretty much it. So what I think I might do is I know how it could be a little annoying sometimes to pause a video, sometimes to take a screenshot. You don't always get it exactly where you want it. I'll take screenshots of this stuff and I'll post them in that same folder on Google Drive and you'll have everything. Both softwares, the settings, all set. Okay, 
So let's save all this. Always remember to click save. <laughs> and it's going to take a minute. Okay, so I'm going to hit continue game because it's already loaded and I'm going to show you the results. Okay, so now that we're in here, a couple things I'll show you before we drive. With your mouse wheel, you can scroll the field of view here. So if you, it's a little too close for you, um, you can do that. If you want to change views while you're driving or if you're walking, hit the C key on your keyboard. And I'll show you walking here. There's first person and third person. Okay, so as you see here, if you see my little mouse pointer, it says C1. So this is your what gear I'm in. This is your transmission. So just take a walk, uh, look at that as I'm going through the gears. So seven gears. And I go back on my stick. There we go. Now if I go over to the, to the left and then um, back, it's going to give me my reverse. Over to the left and up, it's going to give me my forward. And my parking brake on my wheel button works just great now. And you'll be able to see it come up right there. Okay, so I'm in neutral. Now we're in drive. So the first thing I'll show you is on the inside. Get up a good amount of speed here. And I just gently tap my brakes and I can come to a nice stop. If you do it too hard, it will stop abruptly still. But not bad. Not bad at all. All right, so let's check out this 900 degrees of rotation. So we'll turn the wheel to the right. They match up perfectly. And to the left. both stop at the same distance. Give you an outside view, turning the wheel to the right. And to the left. A little hard with one hand, sorry about that. <laughs> and to the right. And to the left. There we go. All right, so there's that uh, rolling or creeping I was talking about. So if you hit the space bar to put on your parking brake, that's gonna stop. So your vehicles will roll away on you. So make sure you remember to do that. <laughs> All right, so I hope this has helped you out. Please let me know what you think down in the comments section. You can message me with uh, any questions you might have and I'll do my best to answer them. And again, links will be in the descriptions for the software and screenshots of the settings as well as Grizzly Bear Sims tutorial because if you don't know how to set up your Logitech G27 profile in the software, he walks you through that in his video as well. Very good resource to um, also utilize today. So until next time, my friends, please take great care of yourself, okay? And bye-bye for now.